This week's Torah portion, Exodus chapter 27, 20 through Exodus chapter 30, concerns something you are all looking at, the eternal light which hangs just above the ark. The portions called Titzaveh Ata Titzaveh et Bnei Yisrael v'Yichuei Lecha Hashem and Zayit, and you, God says to Moses and to our ancestors, you shall instruct the children of Israel to take Shemen Zayit Katit pure olive oil, Lama Or for lighting, Lahalot Ner Tamid to raise up the ner tami, the eternal light. What does this eternal light symbolize? Now, as you know, if there are two Jews, you have three opinions. The commentators in Judaism hold that this eternal flame is symbolic of a number of things. The Jewish people, its brightness and are to remind that no matter how dark the world has become over the last 4,000 years since our people started, we've always managed to find light in a dark world, and that we must always bring God's light of justice and the hope for shalom we just sang for peace into the world. Um, other commentators suggest that the eternal light is not a symbol for the people Israel, but for the Torah, our blueprint for living, which provides the light of wisdom and faith to all who study it. Not so, say other interpreters. The Ner Tamid is really a symbol meant to remind us of all the ethical and ritual commandments, the opportunities for holiness that we should observe in order to brighten the world. And of course, many commentators hold that eternal light is a reminder to everyone in this chapel and everyone in the world that the human spirit is the light of God, that our mission as Jews is to bring out the light in all people, no matter their color, their religion, their physical appearance, that the eternal light, the Ner Tamid, is inside each of us. The indestructibility of the Jewish people, the idea that every single light counts. From this we derive the idea that whenever anyone voluntarily and wholeheartedly does a deed for others or even lights the lights, the illumination radiating from whatever we do by living a life of mitzvah sheds light forever. Now, not to confuse you, but we're in the chapters of the Bible that talk about the furnishings of the original portable sanctuary we started last week, the original ark. And of all the furnishings, of course, we have the eternal light. None has received more attention than the seven-branched candelabrum known as the menorah, the golden candlestick used to illumine the holy of holies during those endless desert nights. The architects of this temple got it right when in the main sanctuary they put on the wall the oldest symbol of Judaism. It's not a star of David. The Hanukkah menorah is an eight-branched takeoff on the original seven-branched menorah. If you look up in our sanctuary on the right side, you'll notice on the mosaic wall, the menorah. I know, I heard someone say, what about the Star of David? Actually, we have that around our necks. Many of us are Christian brothers and sisters, wear crosses. If you're going to wear a symbol of Judaism, 
It's fairly a recent Jewish symbol. It took off, in fact, um, in the 20th century with the establishment of the State of Israel. Yes, it comes from the Middle Ages, but if you're 400 years old in Judaism, you're still young. But when you go to Israel, as many of you have been and as we're going again at the end of May, beginning of June, in the basements of the homes that were burned during the Roman period, during the first century, the wood petrified and preserved Jewish homes literally 2,000 years ago to this day. And they have found on the walls of those homes that you can visit now in the burnt houses beneath the city of Jerusalem, the same seven-branched candelabrum with the near tamid. To think that 2,000 years later in Memphis, Tennessee, that we have the same on our wall, linked a hundred generations later, going back in time to Exodus. This is supposed to be the place to remind us where God dwells. It's been even suggested that the Ner Tami, the eternal light, and the seven branch candelabrum are a night light for God. Which leads to the question, why would the creator of the sun, the moon, and the stars need to keep the home lights burning? Why does God need a nightlight? Why does God need our light? Well, the ancient rabbis were sensitive to the same question. In fact, they put the question directly into God's mouth. And in a commentary known as the Midrash, Shemot Rabbah, on this portion, God says that the light, and I quote from the ancient 1,500-year-old Jewish teaching, the light is in order that you, Jewish people, and by extension all people, may give light to me, capital M, as I give light to you. In other words... It's not that we need God. It's that God needs us. God needs us for a love relationship to produce and to invent ways to be God's helping hands on this earth and to radiate the light. It's as if God has a spotlight shining down on us and asking us to feel what God would feel three miles from here, five miles from here, ten miles from here. And we illuminate light out into the world as God's lights on earth. How do we shine a light back to God in closing with all the darkness of this past week, of what's going on abroad, of the fractiousness in our country? Jewish answer? Tend to that flame of goodness, to the light of freedom, as we sang it tonight from Egypt. Tend to the light of love across all time and space. Tend to the light of kindness and generosity brought into the world by those who carry out the teachings of that eternal light, whether it's Torah, people, or you individually. It's a reminder of the spark of divinity in every man, woman, and child. It symbolizes the spark of God in each of us. In fact, we're, we're told that every Jewish person must light the ner tamid, the eternal light, in his or her own heart. In other words, find your spark of divinity and light it. If that's too spiritual for some of you, then remember what God told us to become in Isaiah 42. God charges the Jewish people, Israel, to be a light unto the nations, to make the light of justice, hope, and peace shine, especially in a world that's very dark, especially 
when we live in a, a world and a time sorely in need of light. In a dark room, did you ever notice that all it takes is one match to dispel the darkness? Bringing light to those who live in darkness is a big part of what it means to be a Jew. And just as the light above the ark in our sanctuary and the Danziger Chapel here reminds us of our moral and ethical obligations to humanity and the world, just as Aaron and his sons, Moses delegates it, God basically says share. I don't know if Moses liked to share, but Aaron is now and his sons are going to be given the role of serving God as the priests. We are the inheritors of the same teaching. We are a kingdom of priests expected to carry on this legacy of light, justice, hope. In a world gone mad, the Ner Tamid reminds us how to be, how to act. So you see, it's deeper than you think just like everything else in our beautiful tradition. Amen.